In the previous session, uh, we have discussed about the need of NAT uh, in the FI environment, right? So when it comes to uh, doing NAT or when it comes to NAT technologies, here FI allows us uh, two methods. One is to go with a NAT pool, uh, which means SNAT, and the other one is SNAT AutoMap, uh, which the translation IP would be your self IP or the floating IP. If in case you are in the HA setup uh, maybe if you have another uh, fi here and you, you are in active standby setup then your floating ip there will be a floating ip we, we, that we have discussed in the earlier session right so that ip will be your translation ip okay and if in case you are using only one box kind of a setup where your self ip become your translation ip so as discussed earlier generally by default uh, fi will do only the destination net for the incoming traffic and the returning traffic fi will do the uh, snet source net right so here uh, first let's see what is the default behavior and then i'll show you in the lab using a wireshark packet capture how does it works both uh, you know uh, using automap and without uh, automap also okay by default as i said it will do only destination set net right so what does it mean when a client request to the virtual server source ip would be 172.16.0.10 and destination ip would be 172.16.0.50 right which is nothing but your virtual server ip once this packet reaches the virtual server based on the load balancing algorithm this request will be forwarded to the any available server based on the load balancing algorithm right just consider this packet is forwarded to maybe this server okay so when this packet is forwarded to this uh, server it will perform the destination net when it's a destination net uh, it won't change the source address the source address will be the same which means 172 16 0.10 so the source there won't be any changes in the source ip uh, the client's ip remains the same okay and where the destination ip would be 10.10.10.10 .10 okay so fi will perform the destination net and forward the packet to the destination server okay and when uh, the server replied to fi in that case when the server replied to uh, fi what it do it put this as the which means it, it becomes the source right so source would be 10.10.10.10 .10 .10 .10 and destination would be 172.16.0.10 okay so once again this packet when it comes to fi before it goes here okay before it goes to the client it will do the source net okay it will change the source net because when the packet comes here now the source is 10.10.10.1 and the destination is 172.16.0.10 right so it will do the uh, source net okay by keeping source as 172.16.0.50 and destination as 172.16.0.50 0.50 so in the earlier session uh, in understanding wh why we are using NAT we also ch uh, discussed about this one arm deployment where there is a possibility of asymmetric routing right so it's mainly used uh, in, in in one arm kind of a deployment because in the one arm kind of a deployment you'll be having a default route uh, your servers will be having a default route towards your router and all your uh, fi and your routers will be in the same network right so when the incoming traffic when the request coming uh, coming in then uh, it reaches the server it reaches your router and it goes to the server your, your fi first and there based on the load balancing algorithm it reaches your server okay when when returning back as both your fi and your server are in the same network it will not forward the packet back to the fi instead what it will do it will forward the packet to its default uh, gateway because uh, the destination is not within the network right the destination is 172.16.0.10 the return packet so there is a possibility for the asymmetric routing and that's the reason we are going for nat right so if we are in, if you are enabling or if you are configuring yes nat uh, or maybe with auto map what, what happens let me show you okay so once you configure uh, auto map or uh, yes net secure net what happens when a client requests to fi source would be 172.16.0.10 right and destination would be 172.16.0.50 your virtual server 
okay by default fi will perform only destination net but once you enable the feature of using a secure net then it will perform the secure net so what happens once this comes here it will change both the source and the destination ip and it will forward uh, to the available server based on the load balancing algorithm let's consider that this packet is going to the server based on the load balance algorithm okay now what happened the source is 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 100 nothing but your self ip okay self ip become your translation ip so that it becomes your source and the destination is 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 3 okay and once the server is when responding it is respond it it keeps us sources 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 3 and destination is 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 100 which is your self ip okay and once this packet comes here again here it will do both source and destination net and it will forward okay it will forward to client maybe this time the source is 172 16.0.50 and destination is 172 16.0.10 okay so this is how uh, it works when we go for uh, secure net yes net okay so let's see let's understand in our lab along with the Ashak packet capture uh, how this source net works right so before i configure a uh, uh, source net what i do let me capture Vaishak. Let me do Vaishak packet captures uh, and I'll show you how it works before enabling or before we going with SNET feature and how it uh, how it works once we enable SNET feature. Okay, so uh, as I want to have a two different uh, in order to show you uh, um, understandable uh, capture, I want to have in a two different window. Okay, so uh, what I did, uh, I have a two setup. Okay, I uh, we have this client to FI communication in uh, VMNet 8 and FI to server communication in VMNet 1, right? So this is basically your uh, I have connected this hub to a uh, a network where your fi and client is connected which means client to fi communication is going on right and this i have connected this hub to a network where your uh, fi and your uh, backend servers are connected okay let me start the capture also i have disabled the monitoring in my fi uh, because i don't want to see multiple packets to confuse okay so that you will not see anything for now maybe but uh, once immediately we initiate a traffic we'll be seeing more so what i'm going to do i'm going to my client machine okay so this is my client machine and uh, the client to fi communication it is connected in vmnet 8 and fi to all these three servers are in vmnet 1 okay i have two different capture one is client to server it's it's in a different capture and fi to all these backend servers are in different capture okay let me initiate let me access my virtual server from my client my first request goes to virtual server sorry web server 2 my second uh, request goes to web server one maybe i think we are going with the round robin method that's fine okay let me open my capture okay let me minimize it so that i can see two captures at the same screen let me show you how it works before we go for automap or before we go for yes net if you see my source ip address is 172.16.0.9 okay which is my client ip address and uh, we initiated a traffic to the virtual server right which is 172.16.0.30 okay so once we initiated a traffic once we requested for http uh, request there is a tcp three-way handshake and once the three-way handshake with the fi the client to fi is successful then a client requested for the http packet and and fi replied it right but what actually happened behind it this is the other session that we captured between our fi to the server okay if you see here what is the source ip source ip is 172.16.0.9 okay and destination ip is 10.10.10.20 which is our server 2 okay because our first request goes to server 2 i believe Okay, let me double confirm it once again. 
this is okay server so one okay I missed it okay that's fine uh, let's see the capture it okay okay we see my first request goes to server to 10.10.10.20 and uh, the, if you see the client uh, source IP address it remains the same okay there is the client source IP is not changed okay only the destination IP is changed here if you see source is 172.16.0.9 whereas destination is 172.16.0.30 which is nothing but a virtual server IP right when it comes to here the destination NAT happens and it change the IP address of the destination okay and it gives the IP address of the server okay and the three-way handshake happened the TCP three-way handshake happened between uh, actually it is from f5 to uh, this one uh, backend server okay uh, so the three-way handshake happened and post to that once the three-way handshake is successful then a uh, client requested for um, http packet http uh, request and server responded it right so it's like the same there is another request we see other three-way handshake towards the web server one okay and we have successful once it, the tcp handshake is successful three-way handshake is successful we have received the uh, http uh, response okay so this is how it works before we go with nat okay we are seeing the source as the same ip address of the client but once we change the once we configure estat in our virtual server then the situation would be different so uh, let me stop my packet here so that I can start it again. I'm going to my FI. I'm going into my virtual server. Okay. Under my virtual server configurations, you will be seeing an option source address translation here. Okay. By default, it would be in none. You need to click here. And if you see, you'll be seeing a two methods. One is SNAT that we'll discuss in the next session. And uh, we are going with auto map, which means the translation IP would be your self IP. If in case you have an HA uh, setup, then your translation IP would be your floating IP. And in our setup, as of now, it is our self IP would be the translation IP. Okay. So now I have configured uh, SNAT. I have enabled SNAT. So let's see how it works. So before initiating a traffic, let me start capturing the packet so that we can see it. So this time, uh, that would be a change okay we can see the change uh, in the source IP address from the packet uh, from between f5 to the backend server okay maybe let me open a new okay, I can close everything I opened a new 172.16.0.30 is my virtual server, right? So again, it goes to server 2 and server 3. Okay, so let me go to my capture. Let me stop it because, uh, yeah, it captured it. That's fine, that's enough for us to analyze. Let me okay. So VMNet 8, it's a communication between our client to the FI. And this is the communication between FI and the backend server. Okay. So if we see here, okay, okay. If you see here, uh, the source is 172.16.0.9 okay and the destination is 172.16.0.3 we don't see any changes here because uh, it is a communication between the client and the virtual server the front end <laughs> okay so it's a communication between client and the virtual server so we are not seeing any changes here where else if you go here um, for the first three-way handshake this is the first three-way handshake and post to the successful handshake uh, uh, client uh, requested for the web page right the web request where else if come here see here instead of a client 172.16.0.9 once the packet reaches the f5 it done both destination net and <coughs> source net so when i say source net 
it translated the IP 172.16.0.9 to the self IP 10.10.10.100. Okay, your 172.16.0.9 IP is translated to the self IP 10.10.10.100. Okay, and it's the same. Uh, the destination IP here it's 172.16.0.30, right? And it is translated to the actual backend destination server 10.10.10.20. Okay, so this is how once we enable SNAT, both are uh, by default it performs with destination NAT, but once we uh, enable uh, SNAT, now here SNAT also performed, which means the source IP address is changed, it translated to the self IP address. Okay. See the communication between the self, the FI, and um, the actual server is with, with the self IP address of the FI, 10.10.10.100. But in the previous case, before we go with the, before we enable SNAT, we have seen the IP address as like 172.16.0.9 here as the source, and the destination as the backend server, right? Whereas once we enable the SNAT, we see 10.10.10.100, uh, which is our self IP of the F5 we self IP we configured for the backend servers, right? That connection. So it becomes the source and it's communicating with the actual server. You see, uh, it's an it's doing the three-way handshake with the actual server and post to the successful handshake, it requested for HTTP page. See here three-way handshake is successful and client requested F5 to give the web page. Okay, and uh, when this three-way handshake is going on parallelly, this side also. Once this three-way handshake is successful, successful, here there is a three-way handshake between FI and uh, backend server on behalf of client. Okay, now here FI is doing the hand three-way handshake with the actual server on behalf of client, and post to the successful handshake, FI self IP with the self IP address, FI requested the backend server to provide the HTTP. Uh, HTTP request whatever he sent here right he, FI he sent to the actual server and when the server 10.10.10.20 uh, responds to FI again FI did both the source and destination uh, NAT and it forwarded the same replay same output to client Okay, but when the pack, same packet comes here, if you see that 10.10.10.20 uh, is translated to 172.16.0.30 and uh, the destination IP 10.10.10.100, it is changed to 172.16.0.9. Okay, so this is how it uh, works. So once you enable SNET, the source IP address, the source client IP address is translated with the self IP address. See again, uh, we initiated two uh, two requests, right? So if you see, uh, there will be an again with server three. Yeah, here it is. But this time also, it is with the self IP address. Okay, there is a three-way handshake, and post to the successful handshake, it asked for the HTTP packet. So this is how uh, HTTP, uh, sorry, SNAT works. SNAT auto map works. Okay. Thank you for watching the video. For more updates, please subscribe the channel and for queries and feedback, please write to us. Thank you.